<laughs> well, there was, there's a terrible private member's bill that has a mandatory minimum jail term for mm -hmm. anyone caught wearing a mask in a riot. Gosh. Now, that okay. doesn't sound like, you know, they, they, and when I spoke against it, I was taunted with jeers about, well, what are you going to do, wear a mask in a riot? You know, they, what, what, what Stephen Harper is a past master at doing is taking any high-profile media event that, that inflames people's passions and turning it into legislation. So the, the, the post, it was hockey. Was it post-hockey riots that happened in Vancouver? Yeah. I never remember which sport it was. That's bad, sorry. Don't put that on the YouTube. But it was post-hockey riots, okay. Well, the fact that people wore masks and then smashed cars, they concealed their identity to break the law. That's one thing. But what they did was they took it and made it a law with a mandatory minimum of, I think, 10 years in jail. Mm. If you're wearing a mask in a riot. Now, I don't know about the rest of you, but I have protested many times, including at the Summit of the Americas in Quebec City. And before going, I thought, oh gosh, I hate it when I get tear gassed and I'm not prepared. Because mm -hmm. I've been tear gassed and not prepared in Seattle at the WTO. I've been a member of the Canadian delegation on that particular event. Pierre Pettigrew was our Minister of Trade. He was quite funny because he kept saying, stick with Elizabeth, she knows all the riders, she'll get you through safely. But anyway, <laughs> I don't like being unprepared because it's a health issue. Mm -hmm. So if you, if you happen to know what to do, you have a bandana and you have vinegar on a bandana and you're prepared to put it over your face mm -hmm. so you can breathe. Mm -hmm. Right away, you're setting yourself up for Same 10 here. years in jail, mandatory minimum, for wearing a mask and a run. Mm -hmm. And I tried to explain this to conservatives. Well, the whole frame of reference of if you're at a protest and you think you might get tear gas, you want to bring a bandana with vinegar on it. It wasn't something with which they could identify. But anyway, that was a very bad bill. Well, what past. about the G20? Well, exactly. In Toronto, exactly. where all those people, just because they had red headscarves, right? Right, right. The other, they, got, they got attacked. Another bad bill that got passed, again, in the, ca in the category of notorious, offensive, incident that isn't a trend. We had the horrific attack on the Greyhound bus where the mm -hmm. poor young man was killed and decapitated by a woman. Well, the man who attacked him was not at that point known to law enforcement. He'd never committed a crime before. He was clearly someone who had significant mental illness. If our mental illness outreach mental health facilities were operating properly, one would hope that he would never have been off his meds and on a Greyhound bus. But who knows, it might have happened no matter what we did, but we clearly had inadequate mental health capacity in Canada. But what they did with that was, was reduce the, or rather erode and undermine a system that's working, which is handling people who go through the criminal law system and are diverted to what's called NCR, not criminally responsible, by virtue of mental illness. So what happens with those people is that they're in a custodial mental health track, not among the prison population. What they've done under this bill that got pushed through, that I tried to amend in the Justice Committee uh, and failed, as I mentioned, ritual slaughter of all my amendments before every committee. Uh, that one, um, they increased the ability of a judge and a prosecutor and even a prison warden to make decisions not to release someone who is considered not fully responsible for much longer. So the people who are, who are <coughs> experts in this area, in mental health and the criminal justice system, were saying, look, you could end up with someone who needs to be in the NCR stream, but whose initial offense is so minor that their lawyer might tell them, look, you do better to go with the criminal justice system because if you go in the NCR system, you run the risk of having someone decide to throw away the key and you're, you're locked up for longer as someone in a mental health situation. So that's another bill that got passed fast this year. Uh, there, there, um, there are so many of them, and I should remember all the ones that were really awful. There is another one about faster removal of the Foreign Criminals Act. It doesn't just apply to people who are foreign criminals. It doesn't apply to people with criminal records. It's highly arbitrary and allows people within Canada to be deported very fast by the Minister of Immigration. And, and, and without proper cause. The number of bills that pass, the fact that they're regressive, include mandatory minimums. We have a mandatory minimum bill that passed in the last session of Parliament that will require a mandatory
mandatory minimum sentence is relatively light. I think it's um, 30 days in jail. But to have a mandatory minimum for defacing a war monument. Now, the examples that were used in the debate in the House of Commons for defacing war monuments included, and forgive me for being you know, too, well, one of the examples of somebody who would have a mandatory minimum was some, where a situation where somebody's just totally inebriated, stumbles out of a bar, and ends up urinating on a war monument in the center of town. Well, they're going to go to jail now. But there's, there's, if they're charged, there's no discretion. That's defacing a war monument. I mean, so there's, again, a, a highly symbolic, non-relevant piece of legislation. Uh, and there's a lot of these sort of identified, another one that was really worrying, which started from an incident in Toronto, this passed in the fall, but got roast at the spring, was a, 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 a corner grocer in Chinatown in Toronto, in Olivia Chow's writings, it was actually her private members there, to say that, and I don't know if you remember this incident, where uh, the, the owner of the store was so tired of people robbing him, that he, he he, I think, sat on someone who was trying to walk off with very expensive plants from his store. The police came within minutes, but the police, and I don't know what was wrong with their sense of discretion or, or proportion, charged the store owner with unlawful confinement for having held this guy till the police showed up. So, appropriate to fix that, and Olivia Chow's bill expanded the rights of citizens' arrest. But what the Conservatives did was amend her bill such that you could exert your right of citizen's arrest within a, a, a reasonable time thereafter, which was interpreted to be up to 24 hours later. The experts who looked at that bill said, wait a minute, this is opening, this is opening the door on increased use of private security forces. So the mall cop can go to your house the next day and pick you up for, for shoplifting. It creates a much larger scope for, for private security forces and not for the police. So that's a dangerous piece of legislation, but that one too. Uh, even keeping track of how many bad bills passed in, in the month of June, it was pretty mind-boggling because they just were pounding them through. Some of them weren't bad. There was one about um, that I supported. I didn't vote against all the bills this spring. There was one for better protection of witnesses in, in the period of time before they testified in a court case. If a witness needed witness protection, there's much more we can do to protect them. So that was a good bill. I voted for that. There were some non-consequential amendments to the tax code that I voted for. But the weird thing about it was that with the time allocation on debate, even when there was a bill where every single member of the House planned to vote for it, it would be obvious through debates that all the parties and me and everybody supported this bill. We'd still go through five hours of fake non-debate and I often just have my question to you, why are we debating this? I'd really like to be debating what you plan to do on, you know, removing CETA, eliminating CETA. I'd really like to be debating what's planned on, you know, on, oh, faster removal of the Foreign Criminals Act. That's, uh, another one is taking away people's citizenship. There are a lot of very worrying bills, but we had this strange rigidity that we had, that we were in, uh, kind of a limbo of, the, of, of a non-debate where we all agreed that had to run out its time before we could be done with that bill, and then the same amount of time for the bills that were really controversial.